up to Mr. O'Brien. Tell us about the new project you're working on. Well, Scott, this is a special microphone. Do you sing really high when that is applied? When this is applied? Yes. <laughs> I... Anyway, the new CD will be coming out in September, October. Uh, hopefully September instead of October. If they're watching this, they already have it. If you already have this, if you're already watching this, you already have our new CD. And you know the title, but right now we don't know the title. We have a title yet, but you know it, because you've already got it. So you're listening to it, hopefully you're enjoying it. We enjoyed doing it, had a great time, always have a great time. Fun at the photo, the photo shoot, at the photo shoot. We had fun at the photo shoot today. The photo shoot, and uh, had a great time today. And just getting pictures made. Have to smile for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> smile. When you're tired of smiling, you still have to smile. <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd talk to you for a few minutes. Actually, I wasn't going to, but you put the camera in my face, so I'm talking to you. So, Good. Oh, feet are way better. We've got our side. What would you like to know? Well, I like trucks. Um, I had a truck since 05. It was an 04 model. I bought it in 05. F-150, black and color. Silver on the bottom. Just a plain Jane truck, you know. No power, nothing. I don't need no power. You know, six cylinder, vinyl floor. Get dirty, I could take the water hose and just squirt it out. Don't worry about it. And I have no powerful windows. My power windows is right there. Right there. That's power. No cruise control, you know. Don't. Don't need all that extra fancy smancy stuff. But as I said, I had a truck for 12 years. F-150, black in color, silver on the bottom. But I don't have it anymore. I'm going to show you a picture of it right here on my phone. This is what happened the other day. Actually, it happens two da two days ago. Oh, what's the day? Monday. Happened yesterday. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. It looks so good right there in that picture. Thankfully, my daughter, she wasn't injured. She was very upset that she tore up my truck. And then when I found out she was okay, I was mad at her for messing up my truck that I've had for 12 years. It's an F-150, black in color, silver at the bottom. I got to get a new one now. Thank you, Brittany. Well, the song Voice of Jesus was written by Lee Black and Don Cook. Uh, when we first heard the demo, we loved the song. Very excited. Lyrically, musically, just the chord progression, the whole nine yards. And it, it said a lot um, for an up-tempo song. Sometimes up-tempo songs tend to be a little, you know, a little, a little more shallow than some of your slow ballads, but this one had meat to it. So we knew we liked it. We knew when we heard it, it was something we wanted to do. You know, it sounded like BFA. 
So we just uh, we grabbed a hold of the song, and those guys are just two phenomenal songwriters. Oh, no Boy, doubt. Yeah, I mean, nothing, anything they write is, is wonderful. The voice of Jesus just reminds us as Christians, if we're going to walk daily with the Lord, uh, if we're going to follow His Word, we need to listen to His voice. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. We need to understand what He wants for us on a daily basis in our life, and that's what that song talks about. Everything He Forgot was written by Lee Black and Aaron Wilburn. And from the very moment I heard it on the bus, it just spoke to me. Um, before I got saved, I did a lot of things that, I, things that I'm not proud of. And uh, let's just say I wasn't, I wasn't perfect. I'm still not perfect, but I'm covered by the blood of Christ because when He saved me when I was 20 years old, Praise God. He says in His Word that He will cast your sins as far as the east is to the west, never to be remembered again. And that's a promise from the Word of God. It's, it's, that's not that easy for us as humans. And as this song explains, the past is always in the past and we tend to dwell on it as, as humans as, as, as here on earth but like it says in the song Christ and, and the Lord never never remembers them again and the moment when we get to that place called heaven it'll be the moment where we won't remember it anymore as well it won't plague us thank you Lord I can't wait for that day The song At the Cross uh, is, is an up-tempo, good up-tempo song. I usually end up with the, the ballads, the big ballads uh, on a project because that's just what I, I kind of gravitate toward to and have down through the years. And Not that often do I get an up-tempo song. It's been, you know, been a lot of while, little while since I got one of those. And uh, I chose this song At the Cross. Lee Black, Devin McGlamory, and Sue Smith wrote this song. And uh, I know there seems like there's a theme here, and there really is in, in this project uh, of forgiveness. 
in so many ways, but that's what this song is another reminder. Lyrically, I'm sitting here looking at the lyric sheet, and uh, there's just so many things that that talks about your troubled past, where there's guilt and shame and, and things that Satan throws up. Uh, I mean, we go to the cross and we lay it down. That's what we do as Christians. That's why Christ died. That's why he shed his blood for you and me so that we can do that, so that we can say, Father, forgive me for those sins and lay those sins down at the foot of the cross. And this song, right, it's a fun song. It's, 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 it kind of sings itself, so to speak. And uh, I think it'll touch your heart. And just remember, that's where you lay things down. That's where you walk away with forgiveness is when you give your heart and your life to Jesus and you kneel at the cross. Where did the arms that open wide Invite the worst of us to come inside Where did the blood flow down for me and for you Where did a crown of thorns declare Our sovereign Lord was suffering there Where did his cry Well, the entire project, um, we all agree, God put together again, gave us 10 more great songs. And uh, we worked hard to find these, though. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we spent a lot of time communicating with the writers, looking through, listening uh, at, at songs for the project. This might be probably the most you've looked in a yeah. long time. But we were picky. I mean, right. I mean we're going right. to be picky. We have always been picky. We're always going to be picky. We don't write our own songs. We don't have that ability. God did not give us that gift. Okay? So... We know what we want. We know what we want to say. We know what we, we know what we want to present each night to the people that come to see our ministry. And so we're going to be very picky. They're going to have to be songs that make sense, that are scripturally sound, uh, that not always talk about, uh, uh, how can I say this, not always talking about just being in heaven. Heaven's going to be a wonderful place. We know that as Christians we're going. As much as our minds can comprehend, we know what heaven's going to be like, and we're looking forward to it. But in day-to-day -day life, we need things now. We need things here. Uh, I don't. I can. I can only speak for myself and saying I need things to strengthen so me today. Do I. Right. And we need to help others. Absolutely. Day to day. Well, I mean, if they strengthen us, they're going to do the same thing to them. Exactly. They're going through, we're going through the same things in our lives. So that's what this project kind of, I think, wraps up. Uh, this is forgiveness. So many people are hurting. So many people are beaten down. Satan is absolutely mm -hmm. on the rampage, and these songs are encouragement. They remind us of how blessed we are and how forgiven we are. And I mean, it's just, we the first time ever, another, another little tidbit, <laughs> first time ever we were not at the tracking session, which is where the music is. That's created. a little different. Uh, we were actually on the road, could not be at the tracking session, and it was done without us, of course, right. uh, with Ricky and Bryce and all the guys. They that did an amazing oh, job. It actually turned out better that we were not Thank there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they, right. they did better that we were not there. They did it quicker, certainly. <laughs> So, yeah, I was told actually by my own son, Ricky, the producer, that we were... He Not you, said, Ricky. So, Dad, I love you, but I, I think I might have been a hindrance before his past. So, so he was kind of happy. <laughs> Don't you love to hear those words from your son? Uh, so he was, they were kind of happy that we weren't there. But it, were, it was kind of different for us because we are the whole time we're on the road, we're sitting there going, I wonder what's happening. I hope they got the right key. I hope they got the right we key. We did the Skype <laughs> thing, though. Yeah, we did Skype. We did Skype. That was, that was yeah, interesting. Skype really. And that was the other. That was That's another else. story altogether. Yeah, also, <laughs> So there's a there's a lot of, lot of firsts on the on the project, but mainly many many hours. Yeah, again, yeah. not to mention this is a second album as a trio. So yes. oh, like that's true. Kinda, yes, kind of settling in mm -hmm. as a trio, mm -hmm. and it's it's tightening up. And I think it sounds people are starting okay. to people are starting to see. I mean, I love it. It's just yep, we're loving it. We're absolutely loving it. God Nothing can, against y'all bass no, no, singers, no, no, man. No, no, no. It, just, look, it doesn't matter whether you're a solo or no. a choir. Duo. It's all, it's all about the song. 
song. Mm-hmm. It should be about the song. If it's about you, you got a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be about the song. It should be about, about it, us delivering the song to the people. Uh, it shouldn't matter whether there's an orchestra up there. I mean, if the message, if all this stuff can, sometimes the message can get lost in a lot of hoopla. So mm-hmm. just focus on the message, focus on what the song's saying. If you do that, like that's we what do, I love, what we, we do. Yeah. Yeah. When Every we listen song. to the demos, man, I, them, <laughs> glory, them glory bumps, man, when we have singing church. the song. We have church. Yeah, come on. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. I love it. I love you, man. <laughs> you ain't right. I love you too, man. Man, don't touch me. Right. <laughs> don't touch we me. hope you love this album because we do. Yes. Sometimes You Need a Song, written by Marty Funderburg and Susie Smith. It's such a cool song, such a cool concept. Um, we obviously all know the importance of having a preacher in our life. Um, someone to minister to us, the Word of God. But um, I've met so many people that come to us after concerts and tell us how much the songs minister to them. And um, sometimes when, when we're struggling the most, all you need is that song to come on the radio. And it, it can change your life. God can work through music. After all, He did create it for Him, to glorify Him. So I believe that that's just as strong, just as important of a vessel to a minister as a preacher on a platform. God can use it. And uh, one cool line in the song is, um, one can't replace the other. You need both to carry on. And I believe that, because there have been times in my life where I was going through something, and uh, I don't know about you, but I don't have my own little personal preacher that rides around with me constantly throughout the day. I turned the radio on, and it was a song that I desperately needed. And um, it can change your whole scope, your whole mindset. You know, God speaks through songs just as well as He does through a sermon. And um, I'm thankful for that, and I hope you enjoy the song. It's a cool spin, and I can't wait for you to hear it. It only takes how great thou art to lead you to the throne. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound can melt a heart of stone. And when God's word convicts you and you repent of sin, the song is said a whisper, come on in. Sometimes you need a sermon to remind you of the truth. Sometimes you need a song to help you make it through. So often it's a sermon that brings you to your knees. But when your heart is broken, you need a melody. One can't replace the other. You need both to carry on. Sometimes you need a sermon. This song is called Anything Is Possible. Uh, Not to be confused with the earlier song titled Anything Is Possible uh, a few albums back. But this one is, uh, it was written by Kenna Turner West and Lee Black. And uh, it speaks of how, you know, you can trust in God to do and handle anything that's in your life that you might be facing, that you might be going through. Uh, Just give it to God. He can handle it. Anything is possible with God. Ever had something you're waiting for, praying for, saying, Lord, I'm trusting in you. 
Tell me, have you ever come face to face with a mountain that's in the way and it just won't move? Well, if you find yourself barely hanging on to hope, here's what the Bible says that you need to know. The song, The End of Grace, is a very special song. I was presented the song uh, two albums ago. Uh, Tony Wood, one of the writers, sent me the song, and I held on to it for the right CD. And this was definitely the right CD for that song. Uh, he was joined by Sue Smith and Joseph Habedank to write that song, uh, three great writers. And it just reminds us that no matter where we've been or what we've done, what our history is, Satan wants to bring that up. He wants to use that on a daily basis to keep us out of the altar, to keep us off our knees, to keep us from giving our heart and our life to Jesus, from making us feel like we're not forgiven for something in our life. Once it's placed under the blood of Jesus Christ, it's truly forgiven, forgotten, forever. And that's what the song talks about. And there is truly, so no matter what you, where you've been or what you've done, there is truly no end of grace. The last song on the album is titled Unheard, written by Lee Black and Gina Bo. The song is very special to me and I feel like it's going to minister to you and, and help a lot of people through struggles in their life. I know a lot of times in the past, even myself, I felt like my prayers were going unanswered, like God didn't hear me or I was just, I was all alone. And this song is, uh, it's just going to give people a lot of hope. I can promise you that whatever you're going through, God hears your prayers. And He may not answer it the way that you that you want Him to. But it's not about us, it's about Him. Everything that you go through in your life happens to glorify God. 
even if you messed up, God can take what you did or what you've gone through to glorify Him to better you. And um, I know that in my life I've, I've gone through trials and I've done things that I regret. And um, there have been times in my life that I've prayed and prayed earnestly over different things, whether it be for myself, my family, my friends, you name it. And uh, the prayers didn't get answered. And I asked God, I was like, why, why, why? But little did I know that he had the bigger plan. You know, he sees a lot of things that we don't see. He knows, he sees way far down the road, further down the road than we, we can even, even imagine. And you can believe that he has, if you're a child of God, he has your best interest at heart. There's never a prayer unheard or a tear unseen with God. As some of you know, if you've watched our past um, videos uh, that Bryce has done, we we do have a great time in the studio. Mm -hmm. we, we have you have, yeah, to, no doubt. you have to cut up a little bit. Um, it's long, grueling hours. We talk about 12, 14, sometimes more hours a day in the studio. And it's, I can speak for, I can only speak for myself, but it's very frustrating when you can't get your part right and you, you hear it, but you can't make yourself do it. And, and then when your son just... Yeah, and then and, and Ricky's in there pressing the button going, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. No, Dad, that's not it. Uh, you know, and after a while, you really, you, you want to get, you know, you want to throw something through a window. It doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. But this project was... It's double paint. Yeah, double paint, insulated. Yeah. But th this project was a, little, was a little different. It was such a labor of love. And as we said earlier, we went through so many songs yes. to pick the 10. Um Although we not that we're not not that we're not focused every time. No. It seemed like the, the focus was, you know, extra. Yeah. If you get in the studio, time. anyone who's been in a recording studio, you get in there and you are just intense every moment. You're gonna shut oh, down yeah. after a few mm -hmm. hours. So yeah, there has to be some lightheartedness. And look, God wants us to be happy. Right. Really? I mean, these people that when y'all say every night on stage. Have no reason to be. Yeah, I mean, if you go through your life looking miserable, nobody's gonna want what you have. And so we're gonna have to, we're gonna enjoy ourselves. We're gonna have fun. So if you don't like people have fun, we're probably not a ministry you want to follow because we're gonna enjoy ourselves. If we're gonna leave our families two hundred days a year, salvation. we're gonna enjoy right. what we do. Uh, Satan fights us as hard as he does you or anybody else, but this project <coughs> strengthened us. It yes, helped it us. It came at a great time for 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 us as a group to because we know. I mean, it's been almost two years. Yeah, it has. And we Doesn't and we know like that it, once we start doing these songs. On stage, and people hear the words of these songs. They're not just your average songs, and they're not just your average message. So I just thank you, Lord. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. I mean, I think you'll enjoy it. And my phone's down here flashing, trying, getting on my nerves. There's some still <sighs> funny. There's some still funny moments. Trying to do something during the something. during the video though. Who's calling? Me home? That's my wife. Yeah. Oh, your wife? I can't, I can't answer it. I can't right now. I mean, I still ate my fifty pounds of M and M's and potato chips, but uh, that's normally how I deal with my frustration. I just 
Eat up everything in day by. wind. Yeah, day sponsored wind. by day wind. <laughs> yeah. They've got to have it stocked pretty good, you know. That, 40 cups of coffee. <laughs> yep. You know. Have good coffee. All day. <laughs> Take all the breakables out of the room. Yeah. You know, so nothing gets broke. Yeah. When I, I have a tantrum. Right. I'll try not to break all the microphones. Yeah. They're expensive. They're very Wow. Like the one of those mics they had in the studio cost seventy dollars. That's high. That's really high. Yes. Seventy dollars. They had to take out a loan to buy that. Not sixty-five. What are you doing with your phone? I'm videoing. Video. Man, 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 we're videoing here. You're supposed to be video. I can be video. video. I can video this. Can't. Man, can I video this? Be, no, you're supposed to be paying attention. Well, I mean, I got to document this. I mean, it's gonna be on there. I'm not gonna sell it, Bryce. Okay. So, so this is what happens at about don't. one a.m. in the morning. This, I'm not gonna sell it. So we get slap happy. I'm, Bill's usually the first one to go off. Yeah? Yeah, he's the first one usually just... What are you doing that with your hand for? I don't know. What does it go I off? I can't talk. Go I off. can't talk unless I use my hands. Go off. You can't see, I can't speak. I can't speak. It's from the beginning, so I just play with it. Even when you think nobody is there, even when it seems that scheme my flobbies go, dreamers they believe long and loud. I uh, turned the volume down for some reason. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Six in a row. <laughs> Doing pretty good. Eleven and twenty. See that? Eleven and twenty. Streak. L six. Lost six. That means in a row. I love them. Love them though. It's my team. Well, I want to talk a moment about the song He Can Take It. Uh, this song is a reminder to us as Christians. Satan wants on a daily basis to remind us of our sin, to keep us beat down, 
to keep us from doing the things that God wants us to do in His kingdom on a daily basis. To not be relevant in the church, to not want to get involved, to not want to do things just because of the sin in our life. You know, sometimes we can't forget those things, but when we turn them over to God, when we release them or give them to Him, and they're covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, they are truly forgiven and forgotten forever and ever. And Jeff Bumgardner, Sue Smith, and Kenna West wrote this song, three awesome songwriters. And uh, it, this is just a, when Satan beats you down and you feel like giving up, if you just trust in him, give it to him, as the song says, he can take it. Bring him every question in your heart, the doubt that's tearing you apart, your greatest hurts, your deepest scars, God can take it. Bring Him all the bitterness inside, the shame you wish that you could hide, the fear that keeps you paralyzed, God can take it. You don't have to be afraid, cause He won't turn you just like new you won't even recognize it when he's through he will use it for his glory use it for your good if you let it go he can take it let go of the things that you Regret the words you wish could be unsaid, the painful past you can't forget. God can take it. You will bear the weight that weighs you down. Mercy's arms are open now. So bring the sin that keeps you bound. God can take it. His grace is strong. strong enough He can take whatever's broken Make it just like new You won't even recognize it When He's through He will use it for His glory Use it for your good If you let it go Just like you, you won't even recognize it when he's through. He will use it for his glory, use it for your good. If you let it go, if you let it go, he can take it. Take it. All right, um, gosh, I have I have so much respect, um, admiration for Brian Free and Assurance. But, but also this, this deep appreciation because uh, my very first professional cut was on the very first Brian Free and Assurance record, which was, gosh, 
gosh, 25 years ago, um, um, a song called Flood the Altar. And so that was kind of the song that made me think, hey, maybe I can be a songwriter. So I've got Brian to um, thank or blame. I'm not sure. <laughs> thank him for for giving me this idea that I could actually be a songwriter and um, you know what's really cool about that song is it was a co-write with Sue Smith and David Moffat and now here gosh is it I think it is like 25 years later that um, yeah 25 years later Sue and I have another song on the new record so it's it's just cool that even after all these years that you know, that first group of writers that I was getting together with, um, um, we had that song, my first song, so special to me on his, on, on the first Brian Free Insurance record. And now to have a song with Sue and, and now Devin McGlamory called At The Cross on the new record. That was a fun afternoon um, when we wrote At The Cross. I can't remember whose hook it was. I think, you know, so many times we just, get in a room and start start talking about what's going on in our lives and somehow we we wound around to that um, to that idea of at the cross and I know that that idea has been tossed around a bunch and and the hymn at the cross but um, it's just a really special moment that afternoon when we um, we kind of landed you know breaking some rules because it does have multiple choruses and just after that bridge, um, when the music just kind of dies out, um, we got to that point of um, uh, of at the cross, we are all the same. And I think all three of us just had one of these moments like, yes, we are, we're all the same. Uh, so that was a just a really sweet moment for the three of us. I love, I love that song on the new record. Um, another special song to me, um, um, was I want to be that man. Um, I remember the day that Ricky and I wrote that. Um, again, it was one of those things that just, it was an honest conversation that started from a real place. Um, and if I'm remembering correctly, I think maybe Brian had just lost both parents recently. And, and Ricky was going to be a father for the first time. And I had small kids at the time. And we were honestly just talking about, um, about legacy and the things that, that were handed down to us and things that, that we wanted to hand down to our kids. And um, eventually we, we landed on this idea of, you know, I want to be that man that, that loves God with everything that I am. And, and pass along these things of faith to um, to my kids, and so that was a man. That was a sweet moment, um, good time, and just again, just so incredibly excited when um, when we heard that they were going to cut it. Great moment. Um, let's see. Here's a funny story on I believe. Uh, so I here. Here I was like in 1992 or whatever with this song of, uh, of it was called Flood the Altar on the very first record and so I, this is great you know you write a song and then like a month later somebody cuts it and then I just kind of went through a drought period and you know got cuts here and there occasionally but I remember um, Kenna West and I were writing one day um, down at Word downtown and um, we had been writing all day and I can't even remember what the song was now but it just was not working and usually I'm one of these types that I go I want to finish everything if we start it let's finish it even if we don't think it's going to get cut let's just finish it and about halfway through that thing we were like this just is not working at all let's let's jump onto something else and I don't remember how we got to um got to that idea but um, I just remember thinking of all of those, the pictures of the stained glass, you know, stained glass stories of faith. I remember that line and I thought, okay, now we're on to something good. And so that was like the first Brian Free Insurance cut that I had had in years. And just how exciting that was to, um, 
to have another cut on a BFA record was um, was a great thing. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, he will carry you was another really really special one to me. Gina Bo and I wrote that one, um, and you know, I, here I'll just confess my sins because sometimes I think as songwriters we. Um, uh, you know, it is a nine to five. It's a, it's a job, and so whether you're feeling it or not, you go in the room and you go, "Here's the here's an idea. Okay, let's chase this one for a while." And that was one of those days that um, um, I just remember in the middle of writing that it just felt like a just honest, deep, heartfelt confession. Just starting at that place of, "Do you ever find yourself asking God where He's been?" ever get up out of bed saying I can't do this again and just starting there and we we were thinking about friends um, you know the second verse has those lines about um, when you get the kind of news that you hoped you'd never hear uh, but then just coming back to the truth of there's a God who loves us and he will carry you when you can't go on he will be your strength when your strength is gone so I remember like just just a really good writing session that day. That was Gina Bo and me. And Gina and I um, have the final cut on the new record. It's a song called Unheard. That's another one of those kind of heart cry um, special songs to me that just says, um, you know, even when you can't find the words in prayer, when you can't when you can't find the words, when you don't know what to say, cry out anyway. Because there's, you know, there's not a tear unseen, and there's not a prayer that goes unheard. Voice of Jesus was written with um, Don Cook, and that was the first time I had ever written with Don. Have known him for a long time, but that was the first time we had ever written. And I'm such a big, big fan of his writing. I loved the For Him records. Um, from years back and you know he was so involved in writing on those and in the production of those that was one of those days where I just kind of walked in the room and went don't do anything stupid this man is a melodic genius just don't do anything stupid keep spitting out lyric until he likes something and then he just is incredible an incredible melody writer and uh, that was a fun write and I loved the way that, that that turned out. Okay, Revival was a fun song for me because at the time, like when Ricky and I wrote um, I Want to Be That Man, um, I feel like we were both contributing lyric and melody that day. Uh, but revival, um, I remember I wrote that mel I wrote that lyric and and sent it to Ricky. We were living in Alabama at the time. We lived um, on the Gulf Coast, a little town called Fairhope, right on Mobile Bay. And I had this favorite spot that um, that I would go to. And um, no, 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 we weren't. We were not living fair. I, we were we had moved back to Nashville, um, but um, we were visiting Fairhope, and I love. We used to live there, <clears throat> loved um, going to the bay. I had this favorite spot where I would go and take a notebook. And um, I remember um, uh, writing the, the lyric to Revival. And um, that was one of those. I just had the lyric. I sent it to Ricky, and he wrote this amazing melody for it. And I cut that. Um, oh, Leave With Nothing Left. That was that was a fun ride because man, you know, Michael Farron and Dave Clark, just two of my favorite writers. And, um, I remember writing that because there was, there was a time frame where we were really as writers really concentrating on the new Brian Free insurance record and just had set aside several weeks to just really, really focus on this. And, um, the day that we started um, Leave With Nothing Left, I remember um, was a hectic day because I had a co-write with Don Cook and we wrote The Voice of Jesus that morning. And then um, I had a co-write booked with, with Michael Farron and Dave Clark down at Michael's office in, in Franklin. So, you know, that's like an hour drive from here. And so I remember 
finishing up with Don and um, and just and, and, and jumping on the road, driving down there and um, uh, tossing around ideas and uh, just love that thought of, you know, sometimes we do get so heavenly minded that we forget we have a lot of good that's still left to do here. And I don't ever want to, um, I don't want to be so caught up in what's coming that I forget about the important stuff that's still left to do now. Um, and that was a, that was a fun afternoon. Um, just so much respect for both of those men and, and what great writers they are. And that was, um, that was another fun one to be a part of that Aaron and I wrote, um, um, everything he forgot that was his he's he's just got this knack for um for saying things in a fresh way and so again that was one of those days that was aaron's hook and i was just glad to be in the room that uh that he let me write it with him that um, um but just what a great thought that there's gonna be a day when i can't remember you know we get so bogged down in some of our junk here but there's gonna be a day when um when I can't remember everything he forgot. That was that was Aaron's hook, and I was just just grateful to be along for the ride. Glad to be in the room that day when uh, when we wrote that one. You know what? I think I remember. I remember hearing that that there was a need for one more fast song, and Kenna and I had written um, "Anything Is Possible" um, several months earlier. I mean, a lot of these songs. Um, were specifically targeted for this record, knowing that it was coming up, kind of knowing themes that might work for it. But Anything Is Possible was one of those songs that Kenna and I had written several months before, and we had a track on it already. And um, just kind of hearing that there was a need for an up-tempo song, and uh, I got this text from Kenna going, hey, we need a vocal on this. So we had the track, and um, I went to my little studio at my house, and. Um, um, recorded uh, recorded that vocal and um, uh, then heard that it made the record and man I tell you I'm just again I have so much respect and uh, just appreciation for this group that to have have these songs on this record I, I can't begin to tell you what that means to me it's just um, it's just really really special to me because I'm grateful for every cut that I ever get. Grateful for every cut. But there's just something about this group, knowing that, you know, almost 25 years ago, it was one song on a Brian Free and Assurance record that gave me a little hope, made me think that I could actually be a songwriter. So I will always have just, just a really, really deep appreciation for Brian Free and Assurance. The song is titled Leave With Nothing Left, and it was written by Michael Farron, Lee Black, and Dave Clark. Um, they truly captured the essence of what every Christian should do in everyday life, and that is reach out beyond their own little circle of influence, um, go out and lead others to Christ, and tell them about Jesus. Um, I think that too many of us Christians would get caught up in, oh, how wonderful heaven's going to be. Uh, I can't wait to get there. And as long as I'm saved and my family's saved, we just totally forget the Great Commission that was given by Christ Himself, and that is to go to all the nations and preach the gospel and share the gospel. That was His commandment to all of us as Christians. And I think this song um, says it to perfection. I love this song. I hope you enjoy it. When I think of all that I've been given, what I've learned from living, I know exactly what I need to do. So I pray that God will give me chances to show how great His grace is 
by living out His truth. If somehow I could choose it, I'd be the one God uses to make a difference in what forever means to you. I don't want to waste a breath, one heart beat in this chest. I want to see I think we should take time to thank uh, all the people involved in, in the project, uh, from the writers to uh, the producer, Ricky, to Bryce, who, uh, audio engineer and video, to Daywin, to Scott, Ed, uh, Justin, Justin, I mean, Justin, many, many Justin, hours. Justin uh, in the studio that spent so many hours, Justin always does. I mean, does an amazing job. We've worked with him for years. Just a great guy. He's always willing to go the extra mile. Everybody there is that way. Uh, it takes a lot of people to make a project that you hear us do mm -hmm. uh, get to you. When you walk to the table and you grab that, uh, and you and you hopefully pay for it. Uh, no, when you, when you grab that uh, that CD, you don't realize the the hundreds and hundreds of hours that went into that from the very very beginning stages to the time that I actually got in your hand from the record company to manufacturing to marketing, you name it. So there's a lot of people that make what we do take place, and we do not forget them, and we don't take them for granted. Because it's without them, it would be pretty tough. It would be tough really, really tough. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dottie. Yeah, Thank Lord you, have mercy. Ed. Thank you, Susan, for putting up with us coming in and out that door every day right there at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes she would like to throw something at us. Rick Shelton there at the end. Rick, Joe Dan. Rick was huge yes. at, at getting us song. Yes. Rick, I yes. wore Rick out. Thank you, Rick. Rick, you know I love you, and I'm so sorry that I absolutely wore you out in this project about getting songs. Uh, but you know how it works, and uh, you're always you used to always bend over backwards to uh, to help us in getting songs, and we appreciate it so thank much. You. It takes everybody, in. and thanks again, and thank you to our families. Oh Lord, oh, yeah. yeah, for the love and support, and yeah. the prayers, yes. and allowing us to do it, so right. we can be so out here and minister. Yep, yep. absolutely. tried to draw the limits of God's mercy and forgiveness, but I'm always left astonished and surprised. He refuses to conform to what I would do and not do. I'm reminded that his ways are not like mine. Getting close. I'm reminded. The song Beyond Amazed was written by Jason Cox, Don Cook, and Sue Smith. Uh, three phenomenal writers. Amazing again, writers, yes. Uh, God has blessed us with a team of writers that just uh, never ceases to amaze us and what the Holy Spirit gives them. And Mike does the song and absolutely tears it up. And it's just one of those songs. Um, it fits talked, you very well, too. We talked about oh, it, yeah, it yeah. lyrically <laughs> about what it, uh, what it says. It just, mm -hmm. on a daily basis, we see God work. We see Him do things in our lives. Uh, the people we know, the people yeah. we meet on the road, uh, watch him perform miracles, and it's just everything he does. It just is. We stand as as Christians, as human beings, we should be beyond amazed. He's an amazing God on a daily basis in yeah. what he does, because there's nothing he can't do. He can do anything, and uh, and just the thought of that uh, should leave us speechless. Should just uh, as the psalm says, mm -hmm. and we should truly be beyond amazed at everything that he does. to draw the limits of God's mercy and forgiveness, but I'm always left astonished and surprised. 
He refuses to conform to what I would do and not do. I'm reminded that his ways are not like mine. He could move the mountains and leave me speechless. Every day I'm overwhelmed by the God he is. He went beyond the throne of heaven, beyond what hell expected. So he could take my cross, that's what love would cost He knew I needed saving, so he was right there waiting To wrap me up in grace I stand here beyond the maze, I stand here beyond And his greatness Though it's way beyond my power to describe He is always faithful And he leaves me speechless Though I'll never understand I still believe He went beyond the throne of heaven Beyond what hell expected So he could take my cross what love would cost He knew I needed saving So he was right there waiting To wrap me up in grace I stand here beyond the maze I stand here beyond the maze I could search forever But I know that I could never find The words to say We just finished up the new CD, uh, 2017, and uh, we haven't even titled it yet. I don't even know what it's going to be called yet. It's got 10 great songs on it that God sent. It's got some great messages, and uh, looking forward to everybody hearing it. It was hard work. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I'm wore hard out. Work. He's wore out. He's wore out. Ricky's wore out. Bryce was wore out. Justin's wore out. <laughs> All God's children wore out. But we got it done. We got it done. We hope you like it. Hope you like it when you hear it. Hope it blesses you. Hope it ministers to you. Half as much as it already has us. We poured our heart and soul into it. Yep. Peace out. <clears throat> you ever down at the river, drop in. That's right. <laughs> I had I had a, a truck. Black in color. Silver on the bottom. Had being keyword. That's going to be a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Where there is hurt, fills the heart. Where there is guilt and shame from a 
Where did the blood flow? 